Is the Leica M10 camera still a viable option for 2024? After just buying the camera, I wanted to find out. Join me as I travel into London for a day of photography, including street photography, being an M camera, street portraits with a model, I'll explain as we get into the video, and then some night photography to see how good the camera is at high ISOs. As an experienced model photographer, I'm going to give you 20 portrait ideas for the next time you're out shooting on the streets. Now, before we get started, how many photos will I get from a new Leica M10 battery? I was a bit worried I wasn't going to get many photos, so I had to pack my cameras accordingly. I wanted to pack light, but I ended up taking like M240 and a battery charger just in case. Stay with me and I'll tell you how I'm going to start using my camera differently. Hello, welcome. Matt here from MrLeica.com. So before we get into the photos, I'm sure some of you will be asking me what gear I was using. My bag of choice was the Wotan Craft Pilot Bag 2 litre, and then I carried the Leica M10, Leica M240 and Leica M3 for film, water bottle, three lenses, M240 spare battery and the M10 battery charger. As always, a huge thanks to my amazing patrons. I share additional content there, links below. Okay, let's get into the photos. So first is my warm up. Let's do some street photography. So my gear of choice for the street photography was a 28mm lens and I decided to go for the TTR Stan 28mm f5.6 for a slightly more analogue, imperfect filmic look. That's my lens of choice. I mean, I could have used the 28mm Voigtlander Ultron, 28mm Voigtlander Scopar, 28mm Leica Elmerit or a few others. But I wanted a slightly less perfect look and more filmic look. So all of these photos are shot at 5.6. And then, yeah, I was just a, it's a very easy lens to use and it gives me a really small setup. As you can see, my photos started as soon as I got on the train. And as soon as I got off the train, I took a few more photos. But the first stop was to head to a camera shop to buy a spare battery for my Leica M10. I did a quick Google and the shop nearest to the station was the Wex. For any fellow Leica shooters, it's about 10 minutes from London Liverpool Street and they do have some Leica stuff in stock. I had to pay £140, which is the going rate for a battery. A big shout out to Jason who recognised me from YouTube and helped me out with my purchase. I asked really nicely if he would let me charge my camera behind the desk and come back an hour later. So that's what we did. I headed out and did some photos and left my new battery on charge. I didn't really know where I was going but I headed towards Brick Lane because I thought that'd be quite good for street photography first thing in the morning. Now what I did do slightly different to normal is the way I carried my camera. So normally if I use an extra I've always carried the camera like this but I wanted to be a bit more stealthy. So now I've got a black camera, I thought oh, I've got a bit more chance of being stealthy. So first I put the camera over my shoulder. Then this was shot in December, so it's cold and kind of raining. So next I put my coat over the top to try and hide the camera, especially you wouldn't be able to see it obviously from the back. And then I thought if I use like a light scarf, A, it wouldn't be too warm, but also it will like mask the camera strap and the camera even better. As it was quite windy, the coat kept blowing open, so then I used a lower button to just try and keep the camera in place. And there it was, I was completely in stealth mode. So that was the way I was carrying the camera for these photos. As I say, all the photos are shot with the 28mm TTR Design F5.6. I was using the camera on auto ISO, which I never normally do, but I wanted to try out the camera and see what it could do at all the different settings. So we'll do a more of a deep dive on the camera settings in a future video, but I thought I'd try 250s of a second to freeze motion, auto ISO, and then I shot pretty much everything at f5.6 because, yeah, it was a dull kind of England, London day, and uh, yeah, I needed all the light I could get. I couldn't decide if this photo is better with or without people. I think I like it without, but let me know in the comments what you think. I like the light reflecting off the tabletop in this photo. This was shooting at a really high ISO, and high ISO seems fine until you push the files, but yeah, we'll cover that in a future video. Uh, this is me trying to be arty and frame the lady up through the bread rolls in the window. Me again doing some attempts at framing, and then getting closer and doing a bit more of the same. Okay, and to the main point of the video, street portraits. So as I'm now a Leica M10 user, I wanted to blend my normal portraiture with street portraits, as the Leica M cameras are better at street photography. So first, as you can see, I've changed my setup. So I've gone from my neck strap to a wrist strap. The wrist strap still allows you to put the camera in your pocket if you've got like a big jacket pocket. And I also changed my lens from a 28mm to a 35mm. I wanted to do a one lens, one camera setup for each section of the day. So for portraits, I was going to try and do the whole day or the whole session, like four hours or something, with a 35mm lens, even though I'm, if you've seen this channel before, you know I'm a 50mm kind of guy. Today's video was inspired by a famous photograph that I think you might recognise. 
This street portrait by Fan Ho was actually a photograph of his cousin. The question is, was it sunlight or was it done in the dark room? So after realising I don't need to photograph strangers for my street portraits, I called upon my model friend Adina to be my muse for the day. So to add variety to your street portraits, tip number one is get closer. The advantage of the Light Lens Lab 35 f2 8 element LTM version of the lens, it will focus to 0.5 metres. So that gives me that option of focusing with live view and doing some extra close shots for that shallow depth of field. All the photos you're seeing are shot with my Leica M10 in RAW and then I just applied my usual Mr Leica presets. I'm actually developing some new Leica M10 presets for myself so I can make those available on the blog once they're available. Tip number two, get low for that different angle of view and then equally for some photos try and get high up and shoot down on your subject again to try and add more interest to the scene. Obviously it depends on the location, if it's totally flat maybe you'll have to try and climb a tree or something. <laughs> Tip number four is try to look at the light as if you'd shoot, say, normal street photography, but then place your model or your person that you're shooting in the street in that light if you're having communication with them and able to move them. You can then frame them with the available light and uh, yeah, try and make the most of the scene and also stand back for some like, wider shots, again, to use the environment. Please let us know in the comments below, but I believe that like M cameras will give you a stronger composition than shooting with many other cameras because with a rangefinder camera, you have constant view and constant depth of everything in the scene. Whereas if you're shooting with a mirrorless camera, say the like SL, you get distracted by that shallow depth of field and blur and things that you're seeing live through the viewfinder. I really think the digital like M cameras must be one of the best ways to teach yourself photography. They're so pure and simple and easy to use. Tip number five, don't be afraid of creative cropping. This is always a note to myself, especially headless crops. Tip number six, use the geometry and framing in your environment to help frame up your portraits. Moving on to tip number six, probably a favorite for many, use reflections for your street portraits. You can use obviously glass or any other reflective material and then just angle your camera so you can obviously see two of whatever you're photographing. Tip number eight, one of my personal favorites, especially recently, is shoot your portraits through glass. I did a lot of this in the Valencia and I'll share more of those photos in future videos, but it really gives a nice depth to some of the pictures. Tip number nine, you could try POV point of view style photos over their shoulder. And tip number 10, you could do some behind the scenes for your Instagram reels or social media. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And number 11, shoot up like straight up vertically. <laughs> tip number 12, frame your model or person in negative space. And that's what I tried to do here using the, the white pillar, contrasting against her black coat and black hair. If you've not seen my model of photography free ebook, I can put a link to that below together with the gear that I was using. Another type of reflections is obviously reflections into water and you can focus on either the reflection or the subject themselves. Everything was going great until the camera battery died. We managed to get 475 photos of which 90% of the photos are probably shot with a rangefinder to try to save the battery. Thankfully, I bought the new battery and charged it for an hour. So I put it on the camera, turned it on. It was dead. For some reason, the new battery wasn't working. So I had no batteries. So having a dead Leica M10 was a good excuse to go and get a coffee. I tried charging my original Leica M10 battery while we were drinking the coffees. And then at the same time, I did a few photos with my Leica M240 inside while the model warmed up and got caffeinated. There's my M10 setup waiting for the battery. And here's an M10 photo with the battery now charged enough that we could go back out and shoot again. As mentioned at the start, do let us know how many photos you get on a single charge in your Leica M10 and what are your best tips to make the battery last a little longer. Okay, on to the next tip. Tip number 13 is detail photos. This is something I'm not great at and so it's always something I'm trying to work on in my future photos. It is popular with, say, fashion photography. Tip number 14 is storytelling, so show both your subject and their location. And tip number 15 is to shoot some photos with strong eye contact. When it comes to portraits, I love looking for available light. And tip number 16 is make the most of the light you have available. I absolutely love portrait lighting and I've got a full video coming on seven types of portrait lighting. So if you're not yet subscribed and that's your thing, feel free to hit subscribe. Look at the hair in this photo compared to tip number 17, Use wind for your photos, it really adds some life to the pictures. Tip number 18 is try to do some fake candid style photos. And here you can see how I'm shooting some of these shots. 
Again, I was getting loads, tried to show both the background and add a bit of drama to the pictures. If you find a photogenic background, feel free to use it. Focus first on the model and next on the background, and then you can post both photos together. By this point of the shoot, we'd lost the daylight, so the search was on to try to find some available light to photograph in. I like to find a combination of both light and ideally some kind of framing so I can use both together in the subject. If you find nice light, photos can be as easy as just, oh, just play in your frame for a second. These pictures were shot to use the overhead lights to try to get some leaning lines into the distance. And tip number 19, don't forget to do some smiley pictures. <laughs> Every model is different, so some photo shoots will be more smiley than others, but equally you always want to have fun. Tip number 20, bokeh shots. I really did miss my fast 50mm lens, but that said, I still tried to do a few bokeh pictures with my limitations of the 35 f2 lens. By that point, we got back to the station and it was time to quickly do this standard ritual of take photos of the back of the camera for Instagram reels and whatnot. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and you'll be able to find Adina there too. Once Adina got a train, I could have got my train home, but as I was kind of excited with my new Lycra M10, I was like, nah, let's go out and take more pictures. So from there, I headed back out into the streets to see what I could do with some night photography and to test the camera at high ISOs. As you can see, there's a tiny bit of daylight left, which gave me the separation between the buildings and the sky, which I thought really helped. And I'm just trying to get different angles. I stayed on the 35mm, but I think in hindsight, I probably would have preferred my 28. I tend to see wider when I'm looking at kind of street scenes. As with some of the portraits earlier in the video for the night photos, I tried to camera on auto ISO, something I don't normally use. I just wanted to see how accurate it is. And it seems to be pretty good. If you're wondering like me, how does the Leica M10 center compare to the say like M240, like M11, like SL, etc. I will do videos comparing the various cameras to my Leica M10 as I get chance. This was just a quick test, but it does look very promising, especially if you know your exposure in camera, not so favorable if you try to fix in post. So what was the story with the Leica M10 batteries? The second battery got me 352 photos and had 10% left at the end. Once I got home, I tried to charge the new battery, and like the store said, both lights were flashing as if it was fully charged, but also as if it was malfunctioning. The new battery's got no charge, so I may need to return it or do some research online. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Happy New Year to you all, and see this video next.